The Republican Zone is brought to you by Drew Murray, a modern view from the Republican lens, covering local and national news, understanding that one size doesn't fit all when it comes to politics. The Republican Zone airs Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. and Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. Good afternoon. You're listening to Usla Media and the Republican Zone. I'm here with my co-host, Leslie Acosta of the Voices of Change. So welcome, Leslie. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. That's right. I, I have my I I don't normally wear a hat inside, but I, I have my Jeff cap on. Well, I gotta say, um, I'm hearing a little echo here, but uh I think it's gone now. Let me just say that you look handsome with that green. Thank you. Uh, kudos to your wife. If probably she selected the clothes for you. <laughs> she may have bought them back in the day, but you look I look very I, nice in that yeah. in that green. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I am I am very Irish, although actually I'm I'm actually not even half Irish, I don't think, but my last name is Murray. So <laughs> I say I'm hundred percent Irish and, and on St. Patrick's Day we're we're all Irish. Yeah. Well, Drew, a lot to talk about. Um, I think you know, to to start. Uh, we had the DA's forum here at Usula Studio. Uh, it was an interesting uh, debate, uh, not your conventional way of, not a debate, but a forum. Mm -hmm. I guess the candidates, they didn't want to, uh, to, to, I guess, have it together. Larry Krasner was a no-show. But I was impressed by both uh, Vega, Carlos Vega, and also Charles Baruto. What, what, what say you? What, what's your, sure, what's your no, take? I thought they both did well. Uh... I know I know Chuck Perillo a little bit, so I have spoken to him. But that was the first time I ever met uh, Carlos Vega. Uh, I thought I thought they both did well. I would have rathered a more traditional debate, um, yeah. but timing didn't allow, and our our friend Larry Krasner uh, did not show up. Um, I don't know. So I, I know you're a fan of Larry Krasner, Leslie. Are you have you changed your opinion now uh, that he did not show up to a debate that he. Uh, I have, I have, I have not changed my my opinion on that. Uh, shame on him for not showing up, right? Uh, I think it, it's a missed opportunity on his part, not to not not to be here uh, for that. I think, I, I I guess he feels confident enough that he's going to win re-election uh, in November. Uh, we've we've talked about this. I, I don't think the candidates that are currently um, running are strong enough to. Uh, to succeed um, against Larry Krasner. Uh, he has uh, big support in the African American community. You know this. Uh, they're going to come out in droves to vote for, for Larry. He's done, he's done a lot uh, for, for that community. Um, I think the Latino vote will be split between Carlos Vega and, and Larry, but ultimately it's not going to be enough. Uh, Carlos Vega would need at least 12% of the Latino vote to be able to overcome uh, Larry Krasner, and that's a tall task to accomplish. If you so it's interesting. Why do you think Carlos Vega would not get more of the Latino vote? Well, because the Latino vote is depleted here. It's very divided in the in the community. Uh, uh, you know, you have different uh, facets uh, supporting different candidates, and so uh, you know, there's that 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 inner fight, and there's not a lot of unity when it comes to the Latino vote. There's a big leadership gap when it comes to the Latino community and the Latino vote. As a result of that, that being said, uh, that will be very difficult for uh, Carlos Vegas to get that ceiling of 12% or higher to win here in the city of Philadelphia. Case in point, when uh, the, the mayor's race, when you had uh, uh, Nelson Diaz running for mayor, uh, he needed that 12% vote to, 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 to win. And because the Latino vote was so depleted and divided, he lost. Uh, pretty big and decisively uh, in the mayor's race. So just given that as an example, that's going to be a tall task for Carlos Vegas to overcome and to surpass uh, because of the uh, the division that we have within the leadership, Latino leadership here in the city of Philadelphia. And is the voter turnout in the Latino community, is it is it typically good? It's typically, typically low because of the division. Of that division. Latino, uh, Latino community. And so the vote, you know, is not is not very high. That's an issue. It's been an issue and a, and a struggle uh, for a very long time here in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, you know, probably if we, we go 25 years back, 30 years back, 
there was a very decisive Latino vote because the coalition was very united. The coalition now is very divided. Therefore, uh, it's depleted. You will not get uh, people that the, the voter apathy is in place. People do not, uh, they don't want to get engaged because of the fighting. And because, of, you know, I think it, it, that exists in every, I guess, within the African-American vote the Caucasian vote, but it's more so prevalent, if you will, in the Latino community. Okay. Well, it'd be interesting. I know, I think the Philadelphia Bar Association is having a debate with yeah. the DA candidates. I, I assume I assume they're on, but it will be interesting to see if, if Larry shows up to that one. Um, I think uh, maybe because it's more, I, I don't know, it's a more, I won't say prestigious. I don't know for Larry. Uh, it's There's a, nothing more prestigious than Republican Zone on Uso Radio. Zone, Leslie. Come on, know, Republican Zone, you know, <laughs> and Mr. Mendez. Some some, some uh, accolades. Uh, you're doing a ver very well, uh, Drew. Uh, we're glad that we have you here because your show. You know, we you get. You, I I always believe in politics. You have to have both sides of the story. You just can't have one. You can't be tilted one way. Well, you know, we can't. If we talk about Larry Krasner, I'm going to bring up the fact that he has a lot of support outside of the city of Philadelphia. And that's why, in my opinion, it's gonna be so hard for Carlos to win the primary money. I mean, Carlos is gonna to have to raise at least, I would think a million dollars. And he had raised a hundred grand, I think in, in a couple of weeks. So a million dollars is not out of the question, but it's it's gonna be challenging for him. And, and, and we'll, we'll see. I mean, he was, I was very impressed with how well-spoken he was and how well he, he answered the questions. Um, because again, I've, I've never met him before, um, but he, in my opinion, was was very impressive. And a lot of people told me they they were very impressed with him. Uh, Republicans who had, who had never heard him speak before, um, yeah. said, you know, really did well answering questions. Well, Carl, as as you know, uh, he's a he's an attorney, right? Uh, he mm -hmm. has years of experience um, prosecuting cases. Whether they were fair or not, that's that's questionable. Uh, you know, uh, what he did and how many cases uh, he prosecuted uh, throughout his career and 30 some years that he served as a, as a DA. Uh, case in point, uh, Luis Gonzalez Suave, uh, you know, who did 32 years in prison and was released, uh, went in as a juvenile lifer, uh, didn't have, uh, you know, didn't have good things to say about Carlos Vegas, but to each his own, right? Uh, I would say, I would say, you know, uh, you know, to each his own. We can't, you know, some people find them excellent, like like yourself. And I, I think Carlos Vegas, you know, he's a good guy, uh, um, uh, you know, but everyone has the right to their opinion. And beauty is always in the eyes of the beholder. So yeah. I think we can title this show Beauty in the Eyes of the Beholder when it comes to the DA's race. What do you think? Well, it'll be interesting to see what he does. It, it's, it, it seems at least that Carlos wants to be more and more progressive. Uh, he went for the reclaim. He went. He, he stood in front of reclaim to get their endorsement, which surprised me, because when I look at his race, I think he needs to be pro progressive. He's a Democrat, but he almost has to be the anti Larry Krasner. Let's face it. That's why he's running, right? He doesn't believe yeah. in what Larry Krasner is doing, but he went after an endorsement from a group that helped Larry get elected originally. Uh, and a very progressive, very progressive group in, in Reclaim. I, I was surprised and honestly disagreed with his even going there. He, you know, if he's going to, I think if he can win, his only chance is, is being honestly a moderate and, and the anti, the opposite of Larry Krasner. Uh, and by going to Reclaim, he kind of, in my opinion, looked to me that he's just trying to be Larry Krasner. You know, it's it's reclaim is a is a very very far left liberal group, and I, I don't think that's the strategy he should use. He's 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 got a, you know, it's a primary, but we are hearing a lot of Republicans switching over for that primary. Do I think the numbers are going to be enough? No, but you know, those Republicans are switching over um, because it's kind of anyone but Larry is is the thought process for. Well, let, let me just say this, uh, Drew. Um, you and I know the city of Philadelphia is, is very democratic, right? So Carlos has to, it's a balancing act, right? Uh, trying to be conservative, but at the same time, be progressive in, in your views so that you're not just catering to one segment of the population. Sure. I think if he has any chance of winning, 
he has to he has to create that balance and act. And yeah, you have a lot of progressive groups out there that, that you know, if he stands a chance or wants to get some type of endorsement or help to to bring him over the finish line, he ha- there's no there's no way of of of, <laughs> of escaping that. You would have yeah. to have these conversations with these progressive groups because they have a lot of money. So yeah, to, to, to your surprise and my surprise, you wouldn't think that Carlos would go to a group like that who's progressive, democratic in their views, very left, lefty, if you will, but he needs money, right? He needs money. And, and, uh, and to run a race like this citywide, you need, you need money to run these races. Mm-hmm. And I think- No, absolutely. And I know, I know Carlos got the FOP endorsement. Uh, and, you know, and when they're, I, they're not going to give him a million bucks to, to. No, no, though they might give him a they might give him a decent chunk of money. I don't know what that is. We could we could look it up uh, probably soon. What how how far six weeks? Are we six weeks ahead? So mm-hmm. financials uh, campaign reports have to be in soon. So we, we'll be able to see what the FOP gave him. I bet they gave him. I don't know. I bet they gave him fifty thousand. That wouldn't surprise me. Maybe more. Um, if well, no, they're not allowed. No, they're they're under the city, so they can only give nine thousand. So, I, I I bet they gave him the full nine thousand. Um, and you yeah. would think, you know, I, I look at the Democratic Party, at least kind of the party that I used to know, is is the blue collar party, you know, mm-hmm. the party of unions. And if uh, if the trade unions stick with their, you know, their brothers and sisters in the FOP, we might see more endorsements head toward toward Carlos. Uh, I just, I mean, just my my assessment of of this, uh, looking from the outside, as they say, Larry's going to win re-election, uh, hands down. Uh, there, it, 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 you know, I know you don't want to hear that, Drew, but that's 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 a reality. No, I I don't disagree with you. I yeah. I would never switch over. I'm a ward leader, a Republican ward leader, so I would never switch over. But no, I am uh, I am rooting for for Colors Vega, but I don't think he's going to have chance to win and i think the outside money is part of it i wish i wish more people would uh would look at that with with some disdain you know i think i think we should pick you know it should be philadelphia money and philadelphia votes that pick our next district attorney if they didn't pick our last district attorney because all the money came from outside from george soros uh and the money is continuing to come outside from people like john legend and and i'm sure george soros will continue to to put money uh Toward Larry, he can't he can't put money directly into his fund because it would violate those campaign finance laws that we just spoke about. But he could he can run as many commercials as he wants for Larry. He could spend a million dollars if he wants. And actually, I don't I don't think that's right. Yeah. But you know that's that's the democratic process that we that we live in. So yeah, and uh, you know it is what it is in in, in the city of Philadelphia when it comes to uh, to to the vote here. Uh, Forty-six uh, percent of the population, forty-seven, is, is African American. That that's a reality. That when you when you run for office, whether it's citywide, you got to start from that premise, right? Uh, African American vote is heavy here in the city. Um, it's powerful. There you, you have powerful coalitions uh, in the African American uh, vote. But once you get their vote, they're loyal. Uh, they're loyal vo- voters, and they will continue to to vote for you. And I, that I can tell you. Um, from from as previously previously ran for for office uh, that I had a lot of support from the African American community. In fact, uh, they were the ones who helped me and propelled me uh, to become the uh, state rep of the 197. These folks, if you if you if 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 you're with them, they're with you. And Larry has done a lot for the African American community, and they will stick with Larry no matter what. I mean that that is for sure. Well, I actually disagree with what he's done for the African-American community, but we're going to take a quick break and we'll talk about that when we get back. You're listening to Utula Media, the Republican Zone, and Voices of Change with Leslie Costa. The Republican Zone is brought to you by Drew Murray, a modern view from the Republican lens. Covering local and national news, understanding that one size doesn't fit all when it comes to politics. The Republican Zone airs Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. and Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. All right, 
Welcome back to the Republican Zone and Voices of Change with Leslie Costa. We're talking about one of my favorite subjects to talk about with Leslie because we completely disagree. So I think it's always good to, to talk about things we disagree with. But uh, it's interesting how you, you kind of finished the last or the first segment, I should say. Uh, you think Larry has done a lot for the African American community. Right? I, 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 think, think, I think he's done a lot of harm to those communities. Uh, uh, Harm. I, listen, there, there's people who have been exonerated um, from, you know, based on investigations that have been reopened on cases uh, or of individuals that have served a lot of time uh, in prison that should have not been in prison because of uh, the way, you know, the police handle information uh, or the way the prosecutors, uh, they wanted to, to, to get a conviction. One of the things that um, I, I think we need reform in, Drew, and this is a conversation that we can have eventually at some point here on your show and my show, is how they need to restructure uh, these bonuses uh, that the prosecutors, they get when they prosecute cases. You can't prosecute a case just to get a conviction to um, you know, move up in your career. Uh, that's not right. It, it's not fair. Um, and that is something that is practiced across this country. Uh, where, you know, you, your performance as a DA, whether at the local level, federal level, or your promotion uh, is based on convictions that you get. And oftentimes, if that's the type of incentive that we have uh, in our criminal justice system, then it's tilted unfairly. Uh, you cannot convict people just because you want to get ahead in your career. Uh, and you want to get a promotion or you get bonuses based on the amount of convictions that you get, that is wrong, that is unfair, and that uh, that promotes um, uh, mass incarceration uh, in this country that stands right now at 2.3 million. So that's I don't, something that- I don't know. totally disagree with you there, but I don't know what else, what else can you do? Their job is to prosecute. Yeah. So as far as a promotion, I don't know if you mean, I don't know, do, you, do they get financial bonuses? I think they get incentives. I, I mean, I think that part of uh, you, and there's a book actually written about about this uh, um, that was written by a prosecutor. I can't, the, the name of the book escapes my name right now. Um, and we're, I, you know, eventually I, what I would like to do is reach out to this individual. I just can't think of the name right now because I'm, I'm thinking where it's not bonuses where they get financial compensation. I'm not, 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 I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, for you to uh, imp you know, move from one level to the next uh, in your career, uh, you have to have certain amount, you have to meet certain amount of quotas uh, in, in convictions. If you're doing that and not doing it fairly um, and you're doing it to promote your career, that's wrong. Uh, you can't, you can't- Of course it's wrong, but if, just, if their job is to yeah. prosecute, then you're gonna measure that performance on the prosecutions, how many prosecutions that they have now i don't think obviously you should not prosecute for the sake of prosecution for the sake of getting oh, the motion i just i just don't know how i don't know how you would get around that because their, their their job is that is, is reality. to prosecute yeah that is a reality that we're that we're dealing with is a revolving door with our criminal justice um mm -hmm. a system uh and look we have good prosecutors out there we have people that um that do an excellent job in their role as as a prosecutor um, but this is all uh, true, and to be quite honest, all of this criminal justice system and prosecutors and lawyers and judges, uh, there's a, there's it, it, it's a, it has to be reformed from the inside out. And so let's let's incarcerate people that need to be incarcerated. Uh, let's not incarcerate people that not that does not need to be uh, incarcerated. Uh, they they just did an interview here Saturday with Ava Lee. Uh, she did 42 years in prison. The woman was not even involved directly at all in this murder, uh, and it was proven. And so the Governor Wolf just pardoned her, exonerated her. Uh, they found uh, they were able to reopen the case and find evidence that she was not involved directly in 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 the, in the case in this murder case. You know, it's it's unfair. You know, a woman that went in when she was 17 years old did 40 years in prison. This is the kind of stuff uh, that should not happen in America. And I, I agree. And, I, and the one time I think I've ever- This is the problem that we have. The one time I ever talked uh, in a good way about Larry Krasner is when he did get someone exonerated who was innocent. 
Right. Uh, and, and, and I I do applaud that work of Larry Krasner. Um, we, we do need to absolutely reduce incarceration. We absolutely need to, to stop putting people in jail who shouldn't. I mean, we're innocent until proven guilty beyond the shadow of a doubt. I mean, in our in our system, we're supposed to let people go if there is any doubt, meaning we're only putting people in jail we know are guilty. And too often, that isn't the case. And, and it's one of the reasons I am opposed to the death penalty, because it's it's you can't reverse it. As, yeah. as, as, as horrible it is that that woman went to jail for 37 years, I think you said, uh, at least she was, we, we were able to let her out of jail. Yeah, but obviously. 40 years. In, in fact, there should be compensation, monetary compensation for people who are wrongfully convicted and done so much time. The government should pay back for all those years spent in prison unfairly and unjust. Um, so that that's my take on it, you know. But Larry, like going back to the issue of Larry, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna win hands down. He's gonna win re-election. The reason I think he's done damage to the American community because when you look at the murder rate in the city of Philadelphia, yep. and these are facts, you can't be you can't twist these facts around. Murder rate has doubled since Larry Krasner took office, and this year we're on, last year was 499. We're on pace. We're at a faster pace this year than we were last year. And a lot of those murders are happening to people of color and in those communities. So I don't understand, or I should say, I believe that Larry has done more harm than good. I mean, you can look, you can talk about the people, the one gentleman, and I forget his name off the top of my head, who was exonerated. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, but, you know, Larry's job is to be the chief prosecutor, uh, not necessarily to to go back and and figure out, you know, if there were circumstances that people were incarcerated incorrectly. You know, not, not that the city shouldn't have that, but Larry's job is to prosecute and he doesn't do it. And right now our murder rate is through the roof because I don't think people believe that they're gonna get arrested and put in jail. And I think this is, it, you can't, in my opinion, deny that it is not a direct, di direct result of the policies of our current district attorney. You know, we talked about one of my questions. I wanted to ask Larry Krasner, but he didn't show up, and I and I, I asked him to still answer that question. Is if poverty take take away the pandemic because we issues occurred during the pandemic, and it doesn't surprise me that crime would increase during the pandemic. But prior to that. Poverty, the poverty levels in Philadelphia, although high, were still decreasing. You would think crime overall, including murder, if there is a correlation, and I believe there is to poverty because people are going to commit, are more inclined to commit crime, not because they're poor, because they need, obviously they, they, they're in a desperate situation. You would think the murder rate would have declined. So in this first two years, the poverty rate went down 2% from 25 to 23%. Why did murder double or almost double in that same time? To me, there's only one variable, and it's the policies of our current district attorney, district attorney Larry Krasner, who thinks, who said out of his mouth that he is now a uh, criminal defense attorney with power. You know, he still considers himself a criminal defense attorney, and he's not. Uh, he's got to consider himself a prosecutor and start prosecuting people. Well, let me just say this. Um, again, you know, we, you and I differ on this point and this issue. We cannot allocate all the murders in Philadelphia on the shoulders of Larry Krasner. That, that, that's just unfair and, and that's not right. I wanted to point out, Charles Peruto made a very interesting point when he came here on the debate, where if, in terms of policy, right? And one of the things that that, policy has to be reformed. And so because the laws are a little bit loose when it comes to uh, owning a gun or uh, this black market, this underground black market that we have where people are able to get these guns and commit these murders here in the city of Philadelphia is out of control. That, that, has, to get, that has to get under control. My point is that if we institute and reform policies and Charles Peruto made a very, very interesting point 
where if we reform policies where you, you're caught with a gun and illegal, you have an, a gun and you're not, and it's not registered and, it, and you have it in your possession and you've got it illegally, mandatory, mandatory, right off the top, you're going to do X amount of time in jail. No questions asked, no negotiation. That's what you're going to do. And I, think I agree. And I think we can't, most, if we can most get Republicans tough, would agree with that. Listen, yeah. And I agree with that. And if we can get tough on those types of laws where if you're caught with a gun and you're using a gun illegally, you should not, that person should not be in our streets. And you should do a, a minimum, a minimum with a gun. I think, I don't know if they have it five years now. Give them 10, you know, put, put it harsh. Uh, 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 these policies, they, they, they have to be instituted and they have to be followed through. And you have to prosecute people that do this to the full extent of the law. Sure. I, and I agree with you. I would include straw pur purchases in that. Yeah. Those, those who, who bought the guns for them. Now, you and you know probably even better than I do, but we need... We can't do that on a local level. We we have to, any gun laws have to run through the state legislature. That's, that's right? exactly what I'm saying. So the Philadelphia delegation, and I go back to the Philadelphia delegation, right? And I go back to Johanna McClinton, who is the leadership now in Harrisburg, is no longer a Frank Dermody. They can't say Frank Dermody was being loose on the gun laws because he lived in Allegheny County up in, in, in the middle of Pennsylvania, and he always voted with the Republican. Now is back on the shoulders of the Democratic Party here in Philadelphia. You sit down, you hunker down, you come up with laws, and we make laws to prosecute people that are using and, and have uh, uh, guns in their possession, and you prosecute to the full extent of the law. I don't wanna hear this crap about, oh no, we have to give people, yeah, we give people second chances. Yeah, we do, but we also have to prosecute people who intentionally cause harm to other people and other families. And that I, 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 um, you know, when it comes when when it comes to that, I think that we are a little too loose. We are a little too loose when it comes to the policies, uh, gun policies here in Pennsylvania. Well, I, I think that will increase incarceration, though. Well, you know what? I think that we need to get. I think if people, if we set an example, I think we can decrease. Uh, the 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 shootings here in the city of Philadelphia. I, think I agree, and, and I'll be, you know. the laws. I think if we get serious with the laws here, we implement that. We get, call it what you will: increase, decrease uh, our our criminal justice. But we got to prosecute people that are illegally they have guns in their possession. I agree, and you know that's that's the mantra. That's what people. I'm not a huge gun person. I I, I believe in the Second Amendment, but a lot of my friends who are, you know, gun advocates, you know, card carrying members of the NRA, they said we, we need to look more at the prosecution of people who own the guns illegally, because that's where most of most of the crime that occurs, most of the violent crime that occurs with with a gun occurs with a gun that was obtained illegally. So but we're going to uh, looks like we're coming up on our second break. So we will be back in a minute. You're listening to the Republican Zone and Voices of Change. The Republican Zone is brought to you by Drew Murray, a modern view from the Republican lens, covering local and national news, understanding that one size doesn't fit all when it comes to politics. The Republican Zone airs Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. and Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. All right. Well, welcome back. You're listening to the Republican Zone and the Voices of Change with Leslie Acosta. And we're still talking about our friend uh, Larry Krasner. We, we kind of started to get into uh, gun regulation and, and gun laws because it is all, all tied together. Uh, I tell you, I am very much looking forward to, to the election in, uh, in a, little over, a little over a month, a month and a half. Uh, but I do, unfortunately, I agree with you, Leslie. I don't, I don't think it's going to be, I should say, it's going to be a big uphill battle for Carlos to win that race. He, he's got to raise a lot of money, which means he's going to need a lot of endorsements. Uh, you can raise money individually, but you know as well as I do that the, the big money comes from, from endorsements. And yeah. also the, the boots on the street, right? You also need the people. Money. You need seed money, you know? Yeah, well, you need, you need people at the polling stations. You know, there's, you know, you're talking about 13, 1400 polling locations throughout the city. 
it could still be a smaller number there uh, this this cycle, but you need you need people at every one of those polling stations, and, and that takes uh, could take money, but it also just takes support from a lot of the unions. So he he really has to pull in. He's got the FOP, which is great. He's going to need more than that, though. He's going to need uh, Carlos is going to need numerous endorsements from groups that can get him people at those polling stations to hand out what they call bullet ballots and say, you know, yeah, vote for Carlos Vega. And it is going to be tough. You know, we'll see. I, I am pulling for, for Carlos to to win that primary. And obviously I'm I'm pulling for in November, I'm I'm pulling for, for Chuck to win. And let me let me just throw some stats out there, uh, Drew, in regards to our gun laws um, across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Philadelphia has the fifth not the fifth highest rate of firearm uh, homicide, uh, you know, in, in, in the country. This is, this is really serious stuff. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the, we, we know some of the violent crimes, they have declined a little bit, but we still have an increase in homicides, um, as you mentioned before. And so th the city of Philadelphia has created something that's called, I don't know if you've heard of it, Drew, uh, Drew is called a roadmap, to, a roadmap to safer communities. I guess to, uh, it's, it's like a five, comprehensive five-year strategy uh, to uh, promote evidence-based programs to help reduce violence, uh, the police department with the community, uh, with your state uh, politicians to come together to, to come up with solutions uh, so that we can decrease crime uh, in, in Philadelphia. But obviously that has not, I guess it has not been effective enough to see that decrease in our violent in our in, in violence and 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 all mm -hmm. these shootings that we have seen and the spike that we have seen in the city of Philadelphia. So there is there there is a roadmap uh, defined by the, by the mayor's office, but uh, we've seen still an increase by ten percent from two thousand and seventeen to two thousand and eighteen. There's been a huge increase um, with, when it comes to homicide in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, so definitely, you know, I know that you blame Larry Krasner. <laughs> I, I absolutely, he is the, the number, not the only reason, it's the, but he is the number one reason it's increased. We can't blame him for all the murders, but we can, I, in my opinion, I can blame him for the increase. I mean, I, we, we see it, and, and not only with, with murder and, and, and violent crimes, we, we've seen Larry's lack of action on, on many things, uh, you know, I don't blame Larry for the encampment across the street from my home this 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 summer. Uh, people who were illegally encamping on uh, a playground in my community, illegally doing drugs in, in that area, uh, an area that had two stabbings, I believe, uh, and multiple uh, attacks on women. Uh, I blame the mayor for that. But I think it's an overall feeling, at least that I get, and I know a lot of people get that it's lawlessness, that you, you're not going to pay for your crime. Another example, we talked about it earlier, that I'll give are, uh, you know, dirt bikes and ATVs that are riding around the city. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure in your community, but in, in my community on the Parkway, and I know on Broad Street, there are gangs of these young men, you know, 20, 30, 30 men. I think it's all, I think it's all men. There could be some women, uh, young men who are illegally riding on these, these vehicles on the road and they're riding in packs, they're running red lights, they are, it's dangerous for everyone. And I know that the police have been told to stand down basically, that they are not to pursue, that they're not to enforce those laws, basically to let them go. Um, and that that's from city council. And to me, you know, it's, so I can't blame that one on Larry Krasner, but I, I feel like in the city of Philadelphia, from the mayor down down to through city council, through the DA, that it's it's we're not going to prosecute when we should prosecute. We're not going to enforce laws that we should enforce. And 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 the, those in city council for that specific example, and I don't know if this was at a committee level or city council hearing overall, you know, they said uh, you know the ATV riding is a cultural thing that. These are young men that, that need an outlet. So we shouldn't do anything. We shouldn't arrest them for doing something illegal. 
and that until we find them somewhere to ride these vehicles, meaning you know a, a location to you know within Fairmount Park, I guess, then we shouldn't we shouldn't enforce the law. Yeah, and I that's think a problem. The proposing is for these riders to ride in the park. Um, and I think there was an article that was written by George Solis. Um, and he it was back in September. I mean, but this has been an ongoing issue where, you know, they were suggesting uh, by city council to find a way to, to resolve this because, it, it, you know, the summertime is coming now. Uh, you're going to see that more, more so. And that's a danger, you know, not only to, your, to the person that's riding that ATV, but also to other members of the community. You know, they're, they're, you know you, you're, especially if you're driving this in the streets, it's, it, it, you, you, we might see a spike in killings um, with these ATVs when people are not riding this responsibly. So I've, I've, been, I, I've witnessed it personally. I was with my daughters probably two years ago, mm -hmm. crossing the street, and they literally almost ran us over. Yeah. And, you know, when I said something as they were going by, I got spit on, literally, well, by, one of, these, by is, one of these young men. And they screamed at me and threatened to come back and beat me up. And they are lucky that my daughters were there because I, I would not have restrained myself in the way that I did if my daughters were not with me. Well, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, I have no sympathy for any one of these young men. I'm sorry. They are doing something illegal. Not that I don't care about their safety, but I, I don't have that. I don't, I don't care that much. I don't want anyone to get hurt, but I'm concerned about the people who they could run over. I'm, I'm concerned about the accidents they, they, they cause because they are running red lights. I'm concerned about a gentleman the other day who they pulled out of his car or there, there, was, there was a minor accident because they shouldn't be on the street, but the uh, person in the car did hit this gentleman's, I believe tapped was the, was the word. And when he got out of the car to make sure the gentleman was okay, the gentleman on the ATV, he, uh, this, this man was beaten to a pulp. And uh, luckily, and, and the, the, the man who beat him up went to get a gun. So luckily someone said, don't do that. And he stopped. That man could have been killed very easily. And unfortunately for city council to act, and I think they're being cowards to put it bluntly, city council, uh, they should make it enforceable now. Not, 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 not when they find some place for them to do something at Fairmount Park. It is illegal now. I don't care if they don't have a place to do this, to be bluntly honest with you, Leslie. Uh, life's not fair sometimes. And I think we just have to realize that. We don't have a place for them. And honestly, I don't know if there should be a place for them because if you, if, if you find a place, it's going to be the only place you could probably even think of is Belmont Plateau. So are you gonna are you gonna open up an ATV park on Belmont Plateau and tell everyone else they can't use it? You know you, you don't get everything in life. You know if you can't ride your ATV on the street because it's illegal, it doesn't mean the city of Philadelphia has to go find a place for them to ride their ATVs. And, and you know I'm I'm sorry. I think every time someone does something illegal in the city of Philadelphia, we don't blame the people who are doing something illegal. We say we have to find another outlet for them. Well, not not always. Uh, not I'm not always. Uh, you, you you don't have a God-given right to ride your ATV somewhere. Sorry, I mean, that, that, that's my opinion. I definitely feel strongly about this one as someone who almost got run over and someone who watched that horrific video last week. Well, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's legal to own one of these bikes. It's legal to own it. However, it's not legal or it's not allowed um, to, uh, for you to ride uh, these bikes on city, on city streets. How do you enforce the law, though, right? That I would make it illegal to own them within city limits at this point, because here's the thing. Unless you own a, a way to transport that vehicle, if you, don't, if you don't have a way to transport it from your driveway, from your garage, you can never ride it. If, if you have to be on the street in order to get to a place where it is legal to ride it, then you're, you have to commit an illegal act to do so. So... I have no problem with making them illegal unless you have a, unless you have means to transport those ATVs or dirt bikes, then just make it illegal. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree that these bikes should not uh, should not be on our streets. It's a danger uh, to themselves. You know, it's a it's a safety issue not only for themselves but to others, pedestrians. Um, 
that are on I, the streets, um, and it's a nuisance. I, I I feel this is a nuisance to be quite honest. I think it's I think it's not only it, it's a quality of life issue for those of us who live near the Parkway and hear these things all night long because they race them up and down the Parkway. And I know Broad Street and Columbus Boulevard have the same issue. They ride them up and down the Art Museum steps. That's a quality of life issue, but it's gotten to the point where it's become a safety issue for 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 many people. And look. I say I don't care about the people on the bikes. I, I do care about specifically the very young people that I've seen. Uh, and, and I look at the men who are also with them, who are setting a horrible example by having these, these young kids ride around on these vehicles. These dangerous, I've seen very young kids. They look younger than my children. Riding these vehicles in ways that absolutely they, they were not meant to be ridden. And then you have these men also in the same pack setting a horrible example. And I, I think that's another, you know, another thing we need to look at. You know, we, I think the police should go after them. I'll be honest with you, in, in a way, they got to do it safe, though, because, the, you know, a few years ago, the reason they didn't do it was because they thought it'd be more dangerous to chase them. And I, and I agree. And, and, and it's not necessarily a real easy solution. Now we're being told that city council is telling them not to do anything until we find a place for them to do it. But, you know, they should set up blockades. They should have, do something in a way that, you know, film these film these people, follow them home, find out where they're keeping these ATVs. And, and, and if it's, if it's, there's evidence that these ATVs were on the street illegally, take them and destroy them, you know. I think <laughs> Alan, I, I believe he, he suggested uh, actually doing like a park. Um, they call it like he uh, potentially he wants he would like to sponsor an ATV park in the city. That was one suggestion. Um, Mark, but again, I go, how do you get there? How uh, do you get your ATVs and motorbikes there unless you have a bed to, to drive them on? And most people, you live, we live in a city. We don't have a place to put these things. I mean, so I love Alan Dom. I disagree with him there. I also don't think it would let it. It would take a huge area a huge area to to create this and i don't know where you could put it belmont plateau fdr park no matter where you put it you're going to end up displacing other people who are using a park for for other purposes you know i yeah. just i don't i don't think the city of philadelphia has to spend the money the resources or the land use to find a place for for people to to ride their motorbikes i yeah. mean there, there are other ways to 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 have an outlet yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an issue and um, it, it, a solution has to definitely, uh, you know, come about because the summertime is coming and we're going to see this and the police will not chase. They won't chase. And I get it to a degree, but if we got to find, there's got to be some way to enforce this because uh, it's getting out of hand. I've seen it. I've seen it grow and grow in my community over the last couple of years. And the fact that it, it was it was another, you know, I I could have believed city council said it publicly that, you know, we're not going to enforce this we're gonna, we're, until we find a place for these young gentlemen to ride their ATV, ATVs and, and dirt bikes. We're not going to enforce it. They literally told these young men and men that it's OK to do it on the street. I mean, that's. Well, hopefully, you know, we, we, there's uh, some resolution to, to this issue. Um, obviously, it's a hazardous uh, situation for uh, for everyone, you know, for the rider and even for 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 the community. But this is Philadelphia, and ultimately, the power lies within leadership of Philadelphia, political leadership of Philadelphia, to come up with a sustainable solution to get these these things off the street. Um, and and you know, uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know what kind of solution they currently have in place or or even if they're talking about any type of solution to address this before the summer gets here, Drew, to be quite honest. Absolutely. So we're going to take another quick break. You're listening to Drew Murray and Leslie Acosta on the Republican Zone and Voices of Change. <laughs> The Republican Zone is brought to you by Drew Murray, a modern view from the Republican lens, covering local and national news, understanding that one size doesn't fit all when it comes to politics. The Republican Zone airs Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. and Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Republican Zone and Voices of Change. Uh, we're, we're talking about the illegal use of ATVs and motorbikes or dirt bikes on the city streets in Philadelphia. Uh, I compare this to an issue that we had a few years ago, Leslie, uh, actually more than a few years ago under Mayor Street, when the skateboarders were in Love Park. And Mayor Street kind of redesigned Love Park and made it, it was always probably illegal to uh, skateboard in the park, but he, he, he took away the kind of what a lot of people said were the best parts of Love Park that made it literally, I mean, a world famous place to, to skateboard that people, you know, video games were, were made of it. Uh, and I was torn when they were kind of completely pushed out of Love Park, but I understood why, because it was a little dangerous, not, not as dangerous as the ATVs, but you know, there, there people skateboards were flying up in the air. I'd been at Love Park when, you know, a skateboard went flying into the air and could have hit someone, but the city, what they did and what the compromise was, was they built a skate park. And I was 100% in favor of that. And I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's just uh, it's right across the street from the art museum mm -hmm. on the bike trail. Uh, I was 100% in favor of it then. It's in our neighborhood. It's in my neighborhood, I should say. It's in Logan Square. But, you know, a few years later, one of the reasons that I think it wasn't a good idea is because if you go look at the state of that skate park right now, it's a disaster. There's graffiti everywhere. It looks horrible. You know, the city did something, they tried to do the right thing, so they spent a significant amount of money to build this thing, and those skateboarders don't take care of that park. You know, I, I'm, I'm the president of a friends group who takes care of parks, and I'm out there once a month cleaning that park. I will tell you that that skate park has never been cleaned, never been weeded, and obviously they've, they've graffitied all over it, and it looks horrible now. In, in an area of the city, that's the jewel of our city across from the art museum, on the bike trail, on the parkway, and it's an eyesore. So, you know, I look at say and hear, oh, we need to find a place for them to ride their ATVs. Well, if I look at the example of the skate park, well, these kids, these young men, these young women, women who use the skate park don't take care of that skate park. So I would be tentative just because of the example that we saw just a few years ago and the way it looks today. Yeah, well. That's also uh, the responsibility of city government, right? That if you're not taking care of something that was given uh, for the pu for public use and you're not taking care of it, uh, revisit the issue um, and, and, and th that has not been done. So, so if, if, if the city has made some concessions to allow people like the skaters, uh, you know, and, and Love Park is the jewel of, of the city, right? Everybody comes, uh, that's like a main attraction uh, in, in the city of Philadelphia and you're not taking care of it and you're trashing it, uh, then, you know, that falls on the shoulders of the city government to come back and revisit this issue and, and, and find a way uh, uh, to shut this thing down. I, I guess there's no appetite for it. There's no uh, need uh, or urgency uh, to address this, but you're right. Um, there, it, it's trash. They're not taking care. They're not taking care of it. They're, they're not uh, you know, t taking responsibility. I mean, if I if I was given the opportunity uh, to give a, a park like that and, and, and given the opportunity to skate and to and to have, you know, sp do my hobby uh, skating and not taking care of it, I, I mean, then I shouldn't have the right to use it. I, I Absolutely. It should be should should be disseminated, if you will. And like many parks in the city, there is a friends group who is supposed to take care of it. Now, I don't expect the friends group to go in and take out all the graffiti. There's, there's too many chemicals involved. I would never ask that of anyone, but I mean, there's weeds that could very easily, you know, the beds could be weeded. The, the, the weeds that are growing in cracks could be weeded. Uh, those who are the stewards of that park could tell people not to graffiti. I mean, there's so much graffiti. It's done in, in, in plain sight. This isn't something that just, just occurs. Oh, that's you know, out, of, out of sight of those people who are advocating and are the stewards of that park. So, uh, and it's really disheartening to see it because the city tried to do the right thing. And it's a beautiful skate park. I mean, it, it's, it's great, um, but it's, they just don't take care of it. And, and it's really disheartening that, that, to see that. Yeah. Well, you know, Drew, uh, w with that, you know, comes 
uh, responsibility. Um, the same thing that we're talking about the AT, the ATVs uh, bikes. You know, we have to uh, definitely something has to be done uh, about that. Uh, kids, they need a scapegoat. Um, um, and I don't know if this scapegoat is a safe one for, for them because you have a lot of young teenagers involved in this, right? That they're, that they're doing this, uh, that they're uh, riding these bikes. Um, and so we, we, we need to come up with a plan, a quick plan to, to address this issue, even somehow have uh, a meeting of the minds with the police department to see how they, they don't even know how to address this issue themselves. They don't know what to do because uh, they don't have any guidance from city government on how to proceed and how to control to control this issue. Um, and if you if you really think about it, the majority of these kids that are riding these bikes, you know, they come from poor communities. Um, Drew, they don't have outlets, uh, you know, to to for recreation, uh, and they find this a recreation to have fun to uh, to get the adrenaline going. But it's not it's not it's not the right the right I would say uh, a place. Uh, to find recreation, you know, uh, so the, the city of Philadelphia definitely has to come up with a solution uh, sooner rather than later, because the summer is just right around the corner. The right. weather's getting warmer, and you're going to see these ATVs uh, all over the place. Here in, in the community that, that I live in, it's it's a problem, you know, they're riding sure. the, in the streets. It's, it's, it's crazy. Well, I think the solution is, number one, I think any any young person in the city of Philadelphia should be able to walk to a rec center or a park. And I think we're getting there. And, and a rec center in a park that's in good condition, not just, you know. Yeah, the lap the, Yeah, the, the, what we see in a lot of them. And the city is is doing that. Um, you know, we have plenty of bike lanes. I mean, I, I tell people who say, oh, we got to let these kids ride their dirt bikes and their ATVs. How about riding a bike? How about getting exercise while you're while you're doing these things? They're, you know, I, I, I see other groups of kids on bicycles at Doing the same things, unfortunately, they're running. They're they're, they're running red lights and, and kind of maybe not acting as, as as well as they should. But you know what? At least they're getting exercise, um, and you're less likely to really. It's it's, it's still dangerous. If you get hit by a bike, you could you could get hurt. Well, but, you know, the, the other option is, is to create uh, an organization uh, that can manage these these ATVs and and like like create a club, right? For 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 these young people. Uh, where there's there's some guidelines, there's some structure, uh, give them some guidance. Uh, that can be an option too. Uh, but there they, there's none. You know, people are just out there riding, having fun. Uh, it's it's just an outlet. It's it's uh, for recreational purposes. And I think this could be a good opportunity for someone with a vision to create maybe a club, a social club, uh, for these ATVs and 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 see how they can control and be the mediator between them and city officials and the police department to come up with, uh, with some type of solution. Well, I'm, I'm up for anything to get them off the streets, but I don't, I, you know, we'll, we'll disagree that. I don't think, I don't think it's up to the city to spend the money or allocate the resources to find a place for people to ride ATVs. Uh, you know, we, we are in an urban environment. There are other things that you can do. Uh, I just don't think ATVs and dirt bikes have any place in, in the city of Philadelphia, um, in, in my opinion. And again, because you, you can never get, unless you're in, in, in an area that has a driveway or a place to park uh, a bed to, re, to, to move these things, you're always gonna be riding through the streets to get these ATVs and, and dirt bikes to a place where you can legally ride them. So you always have to break the law in order to go somewhere to ride easily. Yeah, so. there's always good conversation with you. Uh, you know, we had a a good conversation today about the DA's race and where is that going? Um, uh, you know, I think we are time, we have about a minute left, Drew, uh, but it's always a pleasure speaking to you because this is good information that we get out to the public square. Um, and that's the purpose of uh, your show, my show, to ensure people are, are being informed on, on, the, on the issues, uh, especially things that are currently current events happening here in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, one last thing, Drew, you know, this uh, uh, hopefully, you know, people get are getting their shots for the for the uh, uh, pandemic for the COVID nineteen, and things seems to get uh, getting better. People are allowed to come out more. Uh, you know, I I I feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel with this COVID nineteen, um, and I, I I'm happy because this is this has been a crazy year for for everyone here. Yes, no, in the city of Philadelphia. Absolutely. If you can get your shot, get it. 
go get your shot. No, no questions asked. If you can legally get it, you're over the age of 16 and, and you're in line, then, then get your shot. So, and Leslie, I want to thank you for coming on my show again thank or within you. my, you know, during my time slot. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Bye. We're all Irish today. So and happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone out there. You're listening to The Republican Zone and Leslie Acosta, Voices of Change, and I am Drew Murray. Thank you for listening. The Republican Zone is brought to you by Drew Murray, a modern view from the Republican lens, covering local and national news, understanding that one size doesn't fit all when it comes to politics. The Republican Zone airs Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. and Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m.